Central banks are buying gold at some of the fastest rates we've ever seen. But the reason why they're hoarding gold today might not be what you think, and I'll show you why in this video. This move by the central banks to start buying gold really started in 2022. In the third quarter of 2022, central banks bought more than 400 tons of gold. To put that in perspective, the last time we saw central banks go out of their way to acquire this much gold was back in the early 1970s after President Richard Nixon took the dollar off of the gold standard. Now to help explain why central banks are acquiring so much gold today, let me start by giving you a little bit of backstory on gold and our money. Central banks like the Federal Reserve Bank here in the United States don't act like regular banks. For one, although it's called the Federal Reserve Bank, it's not a real bank. You and I can't go there to deposit money. It's also not a reserve because they don't keep cash reserves anywhere and it's not even federal. It even says so on their website. Now, while they might not be federal, meaning they're not a part of the government, and while they might not keep any reserves, and while they might not be a traditional bank, they do have some important powers. And the power is that they have the ability to control our monetary supply. That means they have the ability to print money and increase how much money we have in our economic system. And up until pretty much now, they never really cared about holding that much gold because, well, this was our money and currency. But it wasn't always like that. Like before the early 1970s, this was just our currency. It wasn't our money. Let me explain what I mean. Money has two primary purposes. One is to be a store of value, and second is to be a medium of exchange. Our paper dollars, what we call money, is actually a currency. It is a very good medium of exchange because I can take this one dollar that I have right here in my pocket and buy a pack of gum or at least I used to be able to buy a pack of gum with this dollar, but it's not a very good store of value because when you see the Federal Reserve Bank print more money, the value of each individual dollar goes down and then it makes it much more expensive to buy gum. Even the dollar store had to raise their prices. Something like physical gold, on the other hand, is a better store of value because it takes time, effort, and labor to mine an ounce of gold and the effort to produce and mine an ounce of gold is represented through the physical gold, but it's not a very easy medium of exchange because if you wanted to go out and buy something, with physical gold, it's not as easy to carry around gold as it is paper dollars. Before 1971, our paper dollars were backed by gold. That meant that our governments and our central bank had to have enough gold to represent the amount of dollars out there. If the government wanted to spend more money and the Federal Reserve Bank had to print more money to fund the government spending, they would need more gold to do that printing. By the way, in case you were wondering, this gold-backed system was called the Bretton Woods System of Monetary Management. So our paper money, our dollars, were backed by physical gold, and if the government wanted to spend more money, it needed more wealth. And this wealth was more physical gold, so we needed more gold to print more money, which could then be used to fund more government spending. Now, this was good because it controlled inflation, but it was bad in the sense that it limited how much the government could spend because there was a limit on money printing. And in the late 1960s, after the Vietnam War ended, well, the government was facing a lot of debt issues. Countries around the world had been loaning the United States money, and then the United States started struggling to pay this money back. We had all this debt, but we weren't making enough money from our tax dollars to pay this money back. And then you saw countries around the world start to get nervous, and they started demanding for their gold instead of asking for dollars because they were worried that the United States would default. Well, in 1971, the then president, President Richard Nixon, took the dollar off the gold standard. Essentially what he said is, you're asking for gold, you're not gonna get gold. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. Our United States dollars are no longer gonna be convertible to gold, and we're not gonna give you countries gold, but we will give you dollars. That single sentence changed our money forever because now our paper dollars were no longer backed by physical gold, which meant that the government had the ability to spend as much money as they wanted because now the Federal Reserve Bank had free will to print money as much as they wanted because we didn't need more gold to print more money. Now, it was very easy for the government to pay off their debts because the Federal Reserve Bank could print as much money as they needed. They gave this money to the government and the government paid off their debts. But you can start to see where the problem arises here because it costs 12 cents to print a $100 bill versus it takes a lot more money, it takes a lot more time, and it takes a lot more effort to mine physical gold. But that's not a big deal. Now the government had the ability to pay off their debts to other countries because the Federal Reserve Bank could just print the money, and then the government went on to spend more money with the help of stimulus that helped consumers and it helped the economy boom. But then eventually, people had to pay the price. 
and the price was the hidden tax of inflation. Less than 10 years after the dollar was taken off the gold standard, we saw the highest inflation that we have seen in modern history here in the United States because of all the money printing that was fueled by the Federal Reserve Bank. To put that in perspective, the highest inflation that we've seen to date after the pandemic was 9.1%, and that was the highest inflation that we've seen since 1981. We were seeing even higher reported inflation in the late 1970s and the early 1980s. See, the problem was when you print money without producing more wealth, which in this case is more physical gold, you cause the value of the dollar to go down, causing the price of things to go up. And that's why we've seen the prices of things like gold skyrocket since the early 1970s, not because gold has become so much more intrinsically valuable, but because the currency we're using to buy gold, in this case dollars, is going down in value. So if our central Central banks and our governments were so quick to move away from physical gold in the early 1970s, why are they working to hoard and acquire so much gold today? Now, this is something that we've been covering in Market Briefs, which is why if you haven't subscribed to Market Briefs, which is my free financial newsletter, you should do so. It's an easy way for you to stay up to date on what's happening in the financial markets, when it's happening. It's a super fun and easy to read email. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning, and we'll give you a complete breakdown of what's happening in the markets to the economy. So if you haven't read Market Briefs yet and haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I'll put the link to how you can join Market Briefs for free down in the description below. According to the Financial Times, the reason why we've been seeing more and more central banks work to acquire more gold is ultimately for one thing, to diversify their reserves away from the dollar. Now, there's more than one factor that led to this switch for the central banks. It started with the United States freezing Russia's assets and their gold after they invaded Ukraine. Then we have the BRICS nations, which are Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa trying to create a new reserve currency which would be backed by none other than gold. And then on top of that, we still are facing the high inflation problems. So it looks like central banks are working to acquire gold kind of like a hedge or insurance to protect them in case the value of their currency, their dollar drops in value because while our paper dollars are a good medium of exchange, again, they don't serve as the best store of value. And when you see this type of high inflation and all these other concerns, the value value of your dollar could go down, which could hurt the wealth that you have as a nation. So now you're seeing these more and more central banks working to acquire physical gold, kind of like insurance, to protect them against potentially a worst case scenario type of situation. This brings me to the question of what does this mean for you? Should you be acquiring gold and what should you be doing? Now look, I am not a licensed financial advisor. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to help you be more financially educated. That way you can make smarter decisions with your money and I can talk about what I do. So for me personally, I invest my money in five different places. I invest my money into my own businesses and startups. I invest my money into physical real estate, I invest my money into stocks, I invest some of my money into cryptocurrency, and then I invest some of my money into physical gold. Now, these last two investments, my cryptocurrency investments and my physical gold investments are my smallest two investments. My gold is my smallest investment. Now, I don't really like calling my gold investment an investment because I don't invest in gold to get a return on my money. The reason why I invest in gold is kind of like a diversification, a hedge, an insurance, is a different way for me to save money. I call it hard savings, a way for me to save hard money as opposed to saving my money in cash. I do have cash savings as well, but I have gold savings as well as an alternative savings because the way that I look at it is if I had $50,000 with the cash, and $50,000 worth of gold, and I buried both of these in my backyard, and then 10 years from now, I go and dig these up, I believe that my physical gold will have more buying power than my cash. Now, can I be wrong? Absolutely, investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest. You might even lose money, which is why you should always do your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. But for me, I invest in gold, physical gold, as a type of insurance. I don't invest in gold contracts or gold ETFs. I own the actual physical gold. Now, how much of my portfolio is gold? Well, it's a very small piece. 2% of my entire investment portfolio is gold. That means the majority of my investment portfolio are into more value producing assets, things like real estate, things like businesses, things like stocks, things where I'm investing in something that's working to produce more value. My gold does not produce any value. It just sits there. 
It doesn't do anything. It's like a type of savings. It just sits there and looks back at you. It's not producing any cash flow. It's not working to change the world. The gold is just sitting there doing nothing. So for me, gold is a small piece of my portfolio, kind of like that doomsday protection. That's why I own gold. It's a little bit of my portfolio. It's not a huge piece, but I own it kind of as a diversification, as a hedge, and as insurance. Now, should you own gold? Well, it just depends on what you believe. Now, how do I buy gold? I use a platform online called Vaulted. They are an affiliate of Minority Mindset. They have sponsored me in the past. If you want to use them, I have a link for them down in the description, but I want you to do your own due diligence because any brokerage is gonna have their own risks included Vaulted. And this is where I want you to make sure you're protected and you make an educated decision. The reason why I like Vaulted is because I have a passive investing system set up where I buy a little bit of gold every single month and it's physical gold. And then as soon as I have enough money in my gold account to buy a full physical gold bar, then I get a physical gold bar shipped out to me. That's why I like it, but you need to do your own research and see what type of platform will allow you to invest in gold the way that you like. And again, this is only if you want to invest in gold. I can't tell you what to do, but this is where I want you to be financially educated. That way you can do your own research and see what is a good investment for you. We made a hundred million dollars in this record year. How about we take some of this money and we save it for emergencies in case we enter a recession in the future. That way we're protected against anything. Well, the problem with that is if you were to save this $100 million, the first thing you have to do is pay taxes because you're taxed on your profit.